now that we've established what limits are, looked at some different examples, techniques for evaluating different types of problems, we want to move on to talking about the derivative. So throughout this course, there are going to be two main topics that we focus on, derivatives and integrals. Integrals will come a little bit later on. So for right now, what we want to do is introduce what derivatives are, come up with a definition for them, and start talking about how we evaluate them. So whenever we're talking about derivatives, really what we're talking about is the rate of change of our function. So how quickly is it increasing? How quickly is it decreasing? So picture below, we have the graph of a revenue function, r of x. We want to start off by answering a couple of simple questions. The first being, how much revenue can we expect to make at a production level of 100 units? So looking at our graph, well, there's two ways to go about this. We could either take that value of 100 and plug it into our function, or we could read this off our graph. So if we trace up from x equals 100, we should find that this point is the point 100, 1800. So we can get that by reading the graph, plugging that value into our function and evaluating, but either way, we can come to the conclusion that r of 100 equals 1,800. So whatever it is that we're producing in this example, if we're at a production level of 100 units, and we're not given a time, so per month, per week, at that production level, we're generating a revenue of $1,800. Again, per month, per week, whatever that time period is. So now we want to answer the question, what would happen if we increased production to 400 units? So again, we could take that value of 1,400, we could plug it into our function, or reading this off the graph, we can trace up to our function value. And either way, what we should come up with is a value of 400, 4,800. I have to forgive my lines not being quite perfect there. Um, but what we should come up with is a value of 4,800, a function value of 4,800. So r of 400 equals 4,800. So at a production level of 400 units, we have a revenue of $4,800. So now we want to look at the question, how much does our revenue change if production has changed from 100 units to 400 units? So we could evaluate that by starting with our revenue at 400 units and subtracting our revenue at 100 units to give us a total of $3,000. So we're taking our revenue at a higher production level minus the revenue at that lower production level to just look at what's the difference or what's the change in revenue. So we can also consider the average and instantaneous rate of change of our function. So when we talk about average rate of change, we're talking about the idea of over some interval between two x values, what's happening to the rate of change of our function. For instantaneous change, we'll build up to that. What we're talking about is the idea of what's happening to our function at an exact instant. And again, we'll go into a little more detail what we mean in just a minute. So let's start with this idea of average rate of change. So we have our two points that we already graphed at x equals 100, <coughs> excuse me, and x equals 400. So there are a couple of different distances that we can indicate now. So for instance, there is a difference between our first x value and our second x value. We're going to designate that distance as h. So in this case, it's the distance between 400 and 100, so it's 300. And we can also look at the height between our two function values, or the distance and the height between our two function values. So we could call this f of a plus h.
minus f of a. So here, again, our value for a is 100. So we're looking at this first x value is f of a plus that 300, that value for h. So f of 400 minus f of a, which is f of 100. So when we talk about the difference between these two values, we're talking about the difference in the height of our function when we're at our first x value and our second x value. So the average rate of change from x equals a to x equals some new point a plus h, so however far apart those two values are, is f of a plus h minus f of a over a plus h minus a. So even though it might look a little bit different um, than how you've seen it before, really this expression is just the formula for the slope of a straight line. So this is our y2 va variable. This is our y1. This is x2, and this is x1. So when we calculate this average rate of change, what we're calculating is this imaginary straight line connecting those two points, connecting f of a and f of a plus h. So now a little bit of simplification. In the numerator, this just stays f of a plus h minus f of a. In the denominator, we're going to have a minus a canceling out with each other. So in the denominator, we get just h. And now we've gotten this reduced down to a form that we've seen before. This is, again, what we call the difference quotient. The difference quotient. So again, all we're really doing with this formula is evaluating the slope of the straight line that connects these two points that we've selected on our graph. We're taking the difference between the y values and the difference between the x values. So that's how we come up with that formula for average rate of change. When we talk about the instantaneous rate of change, we're talking about the instantaneous rate of change at some point x equals a. So the idea here is that, again, we could start with these two points. And again, the distance between, or I'm sorry, the distance between these x values is measured as h. In this case, h is 300. But just h is that arbitrary distance between our two x values. So now what we want to do is consider taking this point and moving it closer and closer to that first value. So if we scoot it a little bit closer, that value for h is going to decrease. If we scoot the second point even closer down the graph, again, that value h, the distance between our x values, is decreasing. So we want to consider what happens as that value for h continues decreasing and decreasing until these points are essentially on top of each other. So we start off with that same expression that we had, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h, which is our formula for average rate of change. h, again, represents the distance between our two x values. So as we're getting this second point closer and closer and closer to that first value, what we're doing is saying that the distance between those two is getting closer and closer to 0. So we're going to start with this average rate of change formula. And in front of that, add the limit as h approaches 0. So when we say the limit as h approaches 0, really what we're saying is the distance between our x values is getting smaller and smaller.
So average rate of change, we're essentially finding the slope of a straight line. So we have that same idea here. We would start off with a line that connects these two points. As that second value, that second x value gets closer and closer and closer, this line continues to change its slope little by little until finally we arrive at a point where we have a line that pretty much passes our graph at exactly that x value. So we're still just calculating the slope of a straight line. The only thing that's changing is the slope of that line. When that second x value, so when h is larger, there is a particular slope for that line. And then as our value for h gets smaller and smaller and smaller, as those two values get closer and closer together, that straight line changes. 